Hi guys, today I'm going to do a quick video on the world's most common turf disease, which is red thread. So first of all guys, we want to identify what exactly red thread is, and it's these brown sort of bleachy patches in the turf. And if we zoom close in on these, we can see that it's got a more red-like appearance, which is where it gets its name from, because it is actually the red threads, which grow from a fungus around the bottom of the leaf. Now this fungus doesn't actually have any effect on the roots or the crown of the grass and only attacks the leaf. Again, here's a little bit of a close-up of some red thread. You can see that it actually grows from the fungus upwards uh, and creates these thread-like appearances. So this is an active patch, which you can see by the redness. But once the um, fungus isn't active, this area will just become brown and eventually the grass will. And as I said, this fungus is attached to the leaf and will grow out eventually, or you can feed it out, uh, and is only temporary. So don't worry if you've got this in your lawn, in your cricket square, or on your sports fields. Uh, it won't last much longer than a couple of weeks. So red thread is actually most common in the spring and autumn, where the weather is sort of mild, so we're sort of talking 15 to 20 degrees, and where there's a lot of dew on the grass, which is uh, a big thing for disease. They, they love the dew. They love the moisture, so we, that's one way to prevent it. We can get rid of that moisture. Um, it won't completely prevent it, but it'll give us a lot better of a chance of not getting red thread. Uh, but the big thing from red thread is it's in fact a deficiency in the, the turf, uh, particularly nitrogen, which causes the uh, vulnerability in the grass, uh, which then the fungus of red thread actually gets into and infects the leaf of the grass. So if we can avoid that by keeping those nitrogen levels up, then we're going to have a lot less effect of red thread on our turf. So another way to actually avoid red thread is to avoid watering directly around this area uh, and adding more moisture. Like I said before, removing the dew and stuff like that will help prevent it. Um, and there's also better varieties of grass which are more tolerant to red thread, um, more tolerant to other diseases as well, in fact. So what these will do, if we cut these off, these will actually stay alive in the, the thatch underneath. And then what they can do is reinfect other wheat grass uh, and then the problem just keeps spreading. Well, we shouldn't have this problem for much longer. Um, naturally, it will grow itself out. But like I say, if you can get a fertilizer on it, that's a bonus. And then last of all, obviously, this is going to be most common in soils which leach uh, nutrients. Uh, or can't hold on to them very well, so heavy clays or, or sandy soils. Uh, really, you, you've got to have a really perfect soil mixture to, to, to stop this from happening. So it happens to the best of us. Pretty much um, everyone really gets this at some point. Uh, and it all tends to be at the same time. So if we've got red thread now, I know the people down the road have got red thread as well. It's just one of them things. We just have to deal with it. It looks unsightly, won't hurt the grass too much, uh, and it'll grow back and recover. So thanks for watching guys, please give us a like, uh, comment, subscribe and if you'd like some more of these videos just showing you about turf diseases, uh, let us know in the comments below.